Hello everybody and today we're going to be talking about In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. This is a single book that's not a series so it's just a one-off book and the she has written several single books so if this sounds like something that you would be interested in she has several other books that I've read two and a half of them at this point and they have similar feels to them I mean different stories and she's going for different things but they have a similar I mean her writing style is definitely present in all of them so this one like I said is in a dark dark wood and it is I don't want to say horror book it's not a horror book it is a vaguely creepy book she has gone for creep factor and a lot of the way that she does that is with the setting you're in a dark woods and a house filled with windows but you can't really see out of the house you can just see kind of like shadows and everyone mentions how they feel like they're like on a stage and this the trees are like the audience watching them and it just it's I'm not doing a very good job of describing it because I am not a writer but um, she basically makes the setting unsettling and every single person is like ha comments how they have like this sense of unease there's something about the house that makes them ill at ease and then she also does this thing where she um, if you've ever watched shows like The Office or um, Parks and Rec where they use awkwardness to build humor she uses awkwardness to make you to add discomfort to a situation and so this is a book that is creepy not because there's necessarily creepy things going on but it's a book that is creepy because you are discomforted she she purposely adds makes the whole situation awkward and not awkward in a like <laughs> I just said something that I thought was funny and no one else did, but awkward in a, in a way that's very discomforting and makes you kind of unsettled. So that's kind of the setting and the, the premise of the book is the main character is invited out of the blue to this woman's uh, bachelorette, they call it Hen because she's, uh, the author's British, but the Hen Weekend basically at this cabin and the main character was friends with the woman who's getting married 10 years ago they were best friends growing up but they haven't spoken in 10 years so getting invited to this weekend is incredibly surprising she doesn't want to go but another one of their mutual friends is like if you go I'll go let's make a pact we'll just go together so they go and something goes horribly wrong during the weekend but you're not really you don't know what the book starts with a the book works in two directions so you're getting flash forwards where it's like after the event has happened whatever the event is and the main character is in the hospital and she's can't remember what happened and then you have most of the book going forward moving up to the event so you're like, okay, I know kind of what happened afterwards because we know where she's at and what happened to her, even though she can't really remember what happened. But you don't, you don't know how they got there and you don't know how, like what it was that happened and you don't know who survived. I would classify this as a mystery book for two reasons, but it's two different kinds of mysteries. There's the mystery of what happened because you spend two thirds of the book trying to figure out what ends up happening because it's all, it's lead up with snippets thrown in from afterwards. So you know there's like this crazy aftermath that happened but you're not sure what actually happened and you're not sure, again, you're like leading up to it. So there's a mystery of like what happened and then after you find out what happened, there's the mystery of, well, who did that thing that happened? And how did they do it? How did this get pulled off? And so it's a mystery through and through.
but two different kinds of mysteries, if that makes sense. The pacing of this book, I would call very fast paced because while there's some parts that kind of, you know, the lead up to the actual event isn't necessarily breakneck, it is broken up with these flash forwards where she's in the hospital and she's got amnesia and we, you know, she's covered in blood and I'm not giving anything away. This all happens within the first like three pages. So, um, you're like, okay, something terrible has happened and you keep getting little snippets of the flash forward and they don't really tell you what happened. You just get an idea of like how bad the extent of the aftermath is. That really, really helps move the book along. So even though the actual buildup to what happened isn't necessarily very fast paced, it's just a group of people out on this very unsettlingly awkward <laughs> hen weekend, bachelorette weekend, the author does a great job of breaking it up. So it feels like it's a breakneck book. It feels like it's super fast paced. It's very compelling. The, this is not a densely written book. This is almost exclusively dialogue and dialogue goes really fast. These are probably some of the shortest chapters I've ever seen in a book. There are chapters that are literally one page. Like I would say the average is three to five pages. So that also helps move a book along, especially when some of those chapters are again, interspersed flash forwards to after the incident. And it's kind of nice because again, if you're trying to like read before you go to bed or get a quick chapter in before you have to pick the kids up from school or whatever, super easy because there's like three pages you have to read. So I wrote down that the pattern of the pacing for these, I, get, I keep saying these because I'm used to doing series, but of this book builds. So while it feels faster in the beginning just because it's being broken up, it actually gets faster in the end because you get to the event and then there's all of this chaos. And so by the end of the book, all kinds of crazy stuff's going down. Like I said, it kind of drags a little in the beginning, not actually drags, but there's definitely a lot of build up, build up, build up, build up. And then the characters in these, in this book are, not the most developed. Uh, this is a book that is definitely plot driven, not character driven. And so there is some character development. You get some secrets revealed about the past. You get people on the side kind of gossiping about other characters. So you learn a little bit more about personalities of people that way. But this is a book that occurs over the course of like three days. So there's not a lot of time for the characters to develop across the time span in the book. And you're not getting flashbacks, you're getting flash forwards to the end of the weekend. So there's just not really an opportunity for a lot of character development. And I didn't, I didn't really feel like the book was lacking for that because you know what you need to know about these characters. And like I said, this is a plot driven book, not a character driven book. So they, the characters didn't fall flat, but if you are a person who loves character driven books and that's what you're really after, or after you need like really well fleshed out characters, this is going to be, this is going to be disappointing. That is not the, this is not the book for you. This is told from the first person perspective. And that is important because she's telling, the main character is telling you her version of the story. And that's really important because after the event, she has amnesia. So I, I don't know why I laugh, that's not funny. She, but she has amnesia. And so you're not sure what happened because she's not sure what happened. She's getting like flashes and bits and, and then other people kind of start giving them, giving her like their version of what happened. And then she's like, okay, I remember this thing that happened. Did that not actually happen? So she in her mind is like all kinds of messed up. She's not sure if what she's remembering actually happened. She can't fully remember what happened. And 
So that part was actually my favorite part of the book. After the event happens and it's revealed what, you know, more or less what happened through different people giving their versions of the story, basically. And her just sitting there like, is what they're telling me actually true? Is it not? I I don't know. Like, I don't remember those things happening. That doesn't seem like something that would really happen. But that's what they're telling me. And I kind of remember something sort of like the outline of what they're telling me. So maybe that's actually what happened. And that was my, I loved that part of the book. I thought that was so well done. The author really kept you not sure because the character, the main character wasn't sure. And I've never read a book like that. Normally it's just, here's what happened. And I've never read a book where you're reading it and the the narrator is like, we don't know what happened. I mean, normally it's like, I know what happened, but I'm not telling you. <laughs> You'll get it later. And this was, I, I don't know what happened. Let's figure it out together. And that, like I said, that was my favorite part. I thought it was genius. It was so well done. So the storyline, like I said, this is a plot driven book. So you have a lot of stuff that happens very quickly. And at the end of the story, it is all wrapped up. There, You're not left hanging. It's not like an actual horror book where you are left to wonder if the people actually defeated the monster or anything like that. No, this is definitely wrapped up. At the end of the book, you know exactly who did what and why, which personally I way prefer. Books with books, movies, stories, stories with open endings mess with my head. If something, if having a story like legitimately wrapped up at the end is important for you, terms that I wrote down to characterize the storyline are strong language. Just I, be aware there is strong language by pretty much everyone in the book. It is a layered plot, so you got a storyline going this way and a storyline going this way, and eventually they meet. This is a book, I wouldn't necessarily say filled with plot twists, but there are a couple pretty major plot twists. So the first part of the book, when you're still working up to the event that happens, the main character very, very frequently refers back to this thing that happened 10 years ago that basically caused her to cut ties and leave everything behind. And we don't know what that is but she refers to it a lot and she's just like oh i i don't want to talk about it basically and i found it really annoying because she refers to it so much and it eventually with more and more detail around it that by the time she actually says oh here's what happened i had completely figured it out because i mean literally you can't go 10 pages without her being like the thing 10 years ago oh, i don't want to talk about it and <laughs> I was like, this is not subtle. I was worried that the entire book was going to be basically like completely telegraphed. And I was like, I don't know about this. And that is not the case. So that was an issue for me. I just wanted to throw that out there in case A, that's going to bother you enough that you're not going to want to read the story. Well, now you know. Or B, you read the story and you're worried that it's not going to be worth reading. Well, you've been warned that it's, it, it's been fine. It's fine. The background of this book is pretty minimal. They are in the woods, in this cabin, in rural Ingr Ingr England, <laughs> in rural England. Wow, that's really hard to say. Um, basically what they describe, what is described in the book is the house itself and the the feelings that the house evokes in the people there for the weekend they're all like this house is creepy i don't like it here's why so there's some description and some time spent really painting what the house looks like and how 
with the lights on, you can't see outside and anybody could be out there watching. And, but other than that, it is very minimal. The focus of this is really on the plot. It's not about a detailed background. It's not about really fleshed out characters. It's about the plot. What happens? Who did the thing that happened? Why? Now, because of this background, this frame, this at atmosphere that the character or that the author has um, painted, you get this, I'm a total wuss, but I found it creepy. I mean, not to the point where I was like, don't turn off the lights, but I was like, I am a little glad I'm sitting here next to somebody else reading this book. It is not, it's definitely not a horror book. I would not go that far, but if you are easily creeped out, then you've been warned. It is mildly creepy and intentionally so. I, I The author, that's part of the story is the creepiness of everything. So the tone of this book is really, I mean, the title of the book is In a Dark, Dark Wood. So no one is going to be surprised when I say the tone of this book is really dark. It's, it's a darker book. It is foreboding. Everyone just keeps talking about how they're like waiting for something to happen and it's menacing. It's psychological. I mean, not just psychological because it's the main character telling you the story. So you're getting her perspective from inside her head, but psychological because she has this amnesia and everyone is like messing with her memories. And she legitimately is just like, I don't know what happened. And so psychological from an actual like psychological perspective and super suspenseful. You, especially once you get to closer to like what's going to happen, you get this through the whole book, you get this sense of it's building, it's building, it's building. And that is done through the flash forwards because you know exactly when the event happens because she's like drawing back to what she remembers and she's like well the last thing i remember is this and then you get to that and you're like oh my gosh it is all about to go down so very suspenseful very well done i actually read this so i can't speak to the audiobook on this one sorry guys but uh, my sisters all got the audiobook and enjoyed it so it can't be terrible right <laughs> Uh, anyway, that was In a Dark, Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. And until next time, happy reading. Gotta get up real close and personal to get the video started. No, apparently I have like three eyelashes. I meant to comb this out and I forgot. This is almost exclusively, um, uh, what's the word? Dialogue. <laughs> They're terrible. Oh, here's my cat. <laughs> He's like, just kidding, I'm out. Hello, hello, hello. I super suspense super suspenseful. <laughs> Can you have any library system? No. <laughs> Over here, dung dung. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay.